Holly here and this is the 16th edition of Oli Ranks where I'll be ranking season 16 of Clash of Doctor Who which is also known as the key to time. So a little bit more of season 16, this is Tom Baker's 5th season where he actually ties with John Pertwee of the most number of seasons as the Doctor and obviously, and obviously the reason why season 16 is quite different to other seasons of Doctor Who because this is also Doctor Who's first ever season long storyline which is the key to time in which the Doctor is tasked by the White Guardian to find six segments of the key to time which is said to restore order in the universe and it's scattered across time and space and obviously all six pieces are disguised and and the Doctor has to find them. And so the six segments were a piece of rock and rebus operation, the planet Califrax and the pirate planet, a necklace owned by the Cicera of Diplos in the Stones of Blood, a piece of statue in the Androids of Tara, Kroll, who swallowed it, which caused it to grow massively in the power of Kroll, and finally, the sixth segment was actually embedded in the DNA of Princess Astra in the Armageddon Factor. Tom Baker returns runs as the fourth Doctor, and John Leeson returns to voice K9, even though he actually plays the second version of K9, as the first one actually left with Lilia and Gallifrey at the end of season 15. And they are joined by Ramona, a young graduate from the Time Lord Academy, and who is played by Mary Tam, but Tam actually leaves at the end of the season, but Ramona remains aboard the TARDIS, where she's replaced by Lala Ward, who played who played Princess Astra in the Armageddon Factor. Graham Williams actually returns to produce season 16, so if you're not familiar with how this works, I'll be ranking all six stories from the key to time, from my least favourite to my favourite of the season and I'll be explaining my reasons why why for why I gave it those rankings. Next place is the power of crawl. This story was a huge mess and without it that one of Robert Holmes's worst scripts in Doctor Who. Holmes didn't even want to write the story and it was very evident because <clears throat> he didn't really want to make like big monster stories and he want he felt like we wanted to write like stories that had like more like like psych some psychological element into it, but he obviously couldn't. He didn't want to do it, but we did have some highlights in the story. So like the Doctor recovering the sixth segment, which crawls swallowed, which made it grow. But the rest of the story did feel very uninspired. The acting was good, but obviously it wasn't enough to like save the story. Tom Bacon did a good job. He had some good moments. So did Mary Tamba. She was, she was okay for what she was given, but Romana did nothing in the story other than getting captured in like, the first five minutes and was in peril for the part one cliffhanger. The side characters were a bit bland, except for Rom Dart and PB Dougie, but they were quickly killed off, so. The villain, the other villain was alright, but that they felt like, as I said in my word before my review, they could have given the villain some more depth as to why he didn't like the Swampies and stuff like that. So I gave the story a 3 out of 10. In 5th place is The Androids of Taro. A good story, but I do think, this is, but I do think that this story has actually have problems, and that problems come with the comedy. As I said before, and I'll say it again, there's nothing wrong with comedy in Doctor Who, but... As long as it's done right, then it actually contributes to the story, then yeah. And the comedy did contribute to the story a little bit, but I do think that they went a bit over, I think they went a bit overboard with the comedy, and at times it just felt a bit cringy, and there are other, there are other parts of the story that were just not good at all, and, and one of my other problems was with Romana again, she pretty much is... How she's pretty much in captivity for most of the story anyways because she actually finds the sixth like the fourth segment quite early on in the story and she's later like I wouldn't say captured but she's taken by Count Grendel of Guacabrock because he she looks like her princess Princess not Astro. I can't remember the princess's name but No but she was yeah but she was pretty because she looked like the princess of that's the Princess of Tara, and then, and then obviously there's a part where she was able to escape from House of Grok, which was quite impressive, and she finds a doctor, but then a couple of minutes later she gets kidnapped again, and that's just very, yeah. yeah but there was some funny bits in the story. I did like the part when Prince Rhinos was, was they put the Android Prince Rhinos on the throne, and then the Android was giving the speech, and he was, and the Android was like malfunctioning, and then yeah, that bit was quite funny. And I also liked how the Doctor and Romana pretty much forgot K9 in the motor count of the of the castle, and then 
they find Kane and the Doctor just laughing. I actually like that ending. I also like the the sword fight between the Doctor and the Count in part four. Oh, it was quite good. So I give the story a seven out of ten. In fourth place is the Rebus Operation, and a story that kicks off the key to time. It's a great start. It's a fun walk back to some serious moments. Granted by Tom by Robert Holmes. We also get introduced to Romano and she had a great introduction. I liked how it was very evident that Romano was actually cleverer than the doctor. And well more competent than the doctor, but she obviously liked the doctor's experience and like time travel and stuff like that and it was very evident. And I liked how the story actually showcased that. We also liked how Romano became fond of K9 and and, and obviously Mary Tam did a very good job portraying Romano. Oh no, so we also have some good side characters as well, such as the comedic duo of Garen and Ostoff, Gar- Garen and Onstoff, the two con artists, and you obviously find their comedic duos in Tom in Robert Holmes stories, as we saw in the Talent of Ring Chiang with Jago and Lightfoot. And Graf Vindicate was a great villain, not very theatrical, and as we thought, I would say that there was a little drag, and some of the cliffhangers were quite weak, so I gave Rebus Operation, an 8 out of 10. Third place is the Armageddon Factor. This is the final story of the Key to Time storyline and it was written as the epic conclusion of the season. And it did feel that way because the second final piece was actually important to the plot because it wasn't just the Doctor Romano who was actually in search for it and the importance of the six segments because we had the Shadow, the Black Guardian's servant, who was looking for it as well but he actually found where the sixth segment was, but it was waiting for the Doctor to come with the other segments so he can like, take the segments from him and give it back to the Black Guardian. Mm. So, I also like, so the sixth segment, as I said before, turned out to be Princess Astra, and she realized her destiny that she become the part of the key to time, which was because the way they realized it because she was like the sixth princess of the sixth warrior house of the sixth dynasty, and that point was very good. I definitely think it's def- one of Bob Baker and Dave Martin's stronger stories. The acting was superb. The character, all characters used to like, especially Kane, and I liked the little stint where he was working for the Shadow, and and I liked how the Shadow was pretty much just the mere puppet for the Black Guardian because the Black Guardian had planned for the Doctor to get the Six Segment and destroy, and that the Shadow be destroyed so he, so the Black Guardian can actually get the Six Segment, all segments from the Doctor to. So he can do whatever he wants with it. But the Doctor obviously saw through this plan and pretty much disassembled all six parts of the key to time. And then I was on the run. Although that was a great part of the story, I did think that was a bit anticlimactic in for the key to time overall. As I said before in the review, so I gave the, the Armageddon Factor an, an 8.5 out of 10. In second place is The Pirate Planet. A fantastic story and a fantastic writing debut for Douglas Adams. The production was very well done, I liked the set and everything, the plot was very good and it had a healthy balance of comedy and drama, back to great villains and I liked how the Doctor and Romana are working with as a team here. And I liked the, the, and also I liked the banter between the Doctor and Romana and Kanan as well, like, as I said before, like, I liked the part when they arrived and the Doctor was trying to ask people for like, where, ask people, they were pretty much ignoring the Doctor but then Romana asked and they instantly gave her the answers and Kanan, uh, and Kanan told the Doctor, they're talking to her because she's prettier. <laughs> and also, but I also liked how Romana's inexperience came into play because she pretty much told the pirate captain about the TARDIS. And speaking of the pirate captain, I thought he was a great villain. I love that robot pirate he had that pretty much killed people. And and when K9 destroyed the pirate, he was obviously very distraught. And the main twist of the story was that the pirate pirate the pirate. Captain was not the main villain, it was his nurse, Queen, Queen Zanxia, who was pretty much using a hologram to, who was pretty much a hologram, and the reason why is because <coughs> she was very old and she was pretty much aging, so so the reason is she was actually destroying planets so she could show up how powerful she was and to also like give her back the youth, and obviously just dis- destroying all of these planets ended up with pretty much, run, pretty much gave that planet their own minerals. So basically the Queen was committing genocide, but that theme was kind of glossed over and they could have at least addressed, addressed it a little bit more. But it's still a very fun watch and I gave the Pirate Planet a 9 out of 10. <coughs> and in first place, The Stones of Blood. Ooh, the 100th story of Doctor Who. 
without it out the best installment of the key to time storyline even though it does have its faults i really love this story and as i said before that the stones of blood was actually the first ever Tetsu Q story i watched them full back in when it was on uk tv drama back in the two th- late 2000s that's where i watched the key to time story for the first time and then and that's why I think the story is a bit important to me. Not just because of that, but the story itself is actually very good. I love the gothic feel to the Stones of Blood. It felt with, uh, with complete with complete with Cortis causing trouble. It does sound like a Hinchcliffe era story, but it doesn't completely fall under that umbrella. And I think it does pretty much amend the faults that the other Hinchcliffe-esque stories from the last season had. It wasn't too... It was pretty much still scary in its own, but it had... But it still had trademark Graham Williams stuff in stuff into it, like the sci-fi elements and all that. The acting was good, brilliant comedic moments. It didn't overshadow the, the dramatic moments. And I really like the part on cliffhanger where Romana pretty much fell off a cliff because she thought it was a doctor, but it turns out it wasn't. And the volcano was used for good. I thought it was, it was used well in the story for once. The villains of the story were very great, especially the Cicero Diplos who used several aliases over the three centuries to avoid capture from the Megara and obviously she had this the third segment so that's what she was using to like avoid people and obviously she was punished and she was turned into the Ogri, one of the rocks that accompanied her and obviously I think one of my favorite Thai characters from this season has to be Professor Amelia Romford and I loved how she, and I loved her report with K9 and the Doctor and I thought she was a very good actress and a very good character so obviously the fault I have with this story is that and I think it's a bit, the pacing is a bit off, and obviously Romano is like cast aside as the damsel in distress as well. And yeah, <coughs> but also give the story 9 out of 10. So, in my opinion, the key to time season slash season 16 was a very experimental season that that worked as it pretty much was Doctor's first ever season long storyline. And despite a very anticlimactic conclusion, it was a very good season aside from the mess that was a power of crawl. So, I give and the large comedy of this season, so I give season 16 slash the key to time a B plus. So, after almost a year of being away, I have completely, I have completely finished season 16. My next set of reviews would be season 17, Tom Baker's record breaking, record breaking season, which turns out to be his penultimate season, and and this season is the first foray into 80s Doctor Who. Other reviews such as James Bond will be put on hold as I. Well, I want to try and get through Doctor as much Doctor as I can over the next couple of months. So, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and watch any other reviews you might be interested in. And please join the links below. Please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Discord, my Discord server, whatever. Until then, I will see you later.